Hello, welcome to A Ticket to Christ. This is the last in the series of Remaining Spiritually Alert. This is series seven, and um, we're looking at Luke chapter 12, starting with verse 25. And this is the Lord speaking. And the Lord said, And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that you have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that you have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord when he cometh shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, Blessed are those servants, and know this, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. But be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. And so this passage from the Lord is just giving us instruction during these end of times and end of times this time around is uh, we're waiting for Jesus to come back a second time. In those days, Jesus recounted two different end of time scenarios, one whereby it was the end of the nation of Israel as they knew it. So it was the end of, of the age for them, whereby they would be driven out and dispersed um, that nation. And um, this, the second one he was referring to was his coming again, his, his second coming to the earth to claim um, uh, his bride, which is the church and uh, the end of all things. So Jesus is saying, those of us, in, in essence, he's giving this scripture to us because it's been over 2,000 years, and so I think that we can expect that it, there's a good potential for the, the end of times generation to be us. Plus, we're looking around, we're seeing evil abound. We know when we look through history, generally when things start getting festering like this, it's coming close to end of days. So Jesus, in understanding the climate of what society would be like tells us not to worry. Not to worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to be wearing, what you, where you're going to live. That if if we have made um, Jesus Lord of our lives and that our lives are in Christ, God takes up the responsibility for providing for us. And Jesus is giving us an example of how God provides for uh, the grass and the, the birds and the flowers, but God's provision is perfect. We couldn't improve upon the clothing the grass is wearing or the flowers. We couldn't improve on that. It's perfectly fit for uh, the role and the purpose of those things. The, the bird is, is 
fitted perfectly with its feathers. You wouldn't want to see a bird wearing a, a leather jacket. It would be weird and it would hinder that bird. Uh, so God in his wisdom created and designed these things for a specific purpose and fit them based on their purpose with what they need, where they need to be and what they need. And Jesus is saying it's the same thing. If you're walking in the will of God, if you're centered on him, if you're uh, fulfilling the plan and purpose that he intended for you, God will also bring the provision that you need for what you will where, where you live, what you will eat, or whatever your need is, your core needs are, uh, to function in his will and according to his purpose for you. And a lot of times why we worry is because we stepped out of God's will for our lives. We're not seeking God's kingdom first. We're not seeking his righteousness first. Um, in fact, for some people, it might be they're seeking self-righteousness or the world's righteousness rather than God's righteousness. And so when you step out of the will of God, when you step out of obedience to God, um, then that fear and that worry and that doubt can come in because then all of a sudden you're not certain that you're aligned with God. You're not sure that you're walking in lockstep with him. But if you um, really are in obedience with God in the areas that you know and understand through him revealing it to you, then you don't have to worry, you don't have to fear because Jesus is guaranteeing here that God will provide what you need. And then Jesus says in verse 29, don't be, don't doubt. Don't be of a doubtful mind. Don't worry about um, what you, what's gonna happen to you. You know, one scenario happened to me in my life once I remember losing a job that I really, really liked. And I fought tooth and nail to keep that job. I felt, no, they're, you know, they're being unfair and um, lost the job. It paid a lot of money <laughs> and um, we relied heavily on that job um, and the benefits it provided, especially medical benefits. And, um, you know, at the time I just surrendered back to God. I'm like, okay, God, so what are we going to do? You know, we tried, I tried, you know, to keep my job and, you know, did as best as I could, but it, it left. And then God sent me another job similar type of job, but better in the sense it didn't have the level of stress that other job had. And, but through that, I learned a big lesson. And, and the funny thing is the second job I got, I never even applied for it. They called me, you know, through a friend referred me and that's how I got it. And it just positioned me um, emotionally in a better place, less stress, less um, problems, and um, here we are. So God is able uh, to provide for you exactly what you need. Sometimes there are setbacks, but in relying on trusting in him, he will give you what, what, what you need. And then through that, I was able to learn, you know what? If God wants it, if if God wants me there, I will be. If God doesn't want me there, if, if the door is allowed to be closed, that's fine too. You know, God is going to lead me to where I need to be. Um, and th that type of attitude can only come if God is your reward. If, if the Father God himself is the reward, is where your treasure is, no one can take anything away from you. Because whatever happens in your life won't affect that. Because God always wins. God always has the victory. If your life is a life being lived to glorify God, then the decisions and choices that are up to you that you make uh, to bring him glory, you will be satisfied that God will be glorified no matter what, even if you face a setback, no matter what the world throws at you, no matter what people try to take away, no matter who excludes you or doesn't include you, it, it won't matter because your treasure isn't in the world. It's not in the system of the world. It's not in material things. It's not in people. It's not in what you can and can cannot get. Your treasure is in God himself being your reward. And so if your life is buried in, in God like that, you're living a win-win life and you're living a life whereby you're not looking over your shoulder, wringing your hands and nervous about every little thing, that uh, every little wind that comes and goes. Another thing Jesus is talking about is 
um, gird, let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. Jesus is saying, be alert, be ready. Your loins be girded about, you know, in though I, I, that's a clothing analogy from back in those days where they would wear these, I guess, loincloths. I, I don't know. It's, it's a kind of garment whereby they girded their loins. And you did that when you were in, I guess, about to, you know, you're going to war. You don't go to war with your clothes, clothing hanging. You, you gird those loins up because you're, you know, you're prepared for battle. Jesus is like, stay battle ready with your lights burning. Um, and uh, wait, you know, wait for him. And he talked about in 36, uh, wait so that when Jesus comes and he knocks, they will open for him immediately. And I think of that scripture in Revelation. I think it's Revelation 2 or 3 whereby you see Jesus knocking on the door of the cold church, that church whose heart was, no, the lukewarm church. And they could, they didn't open. There was Jesus standing outside knocking, but they were lukewarm and were not ready for him. And so Jesus is warning us not to be that type of church, not to be those types of disciples whereby we're lukewarm. And when he comes knocking, we can't open immediately for him. He's saying, blessed are those servants whom when he comes, He's going to find us watching. We're going to be on the alert. There's some people who are very much into, well, I don't want to know too much of what's going on. Well, Jesus says to watch. If you don't know what's going on, you, won't, you will not be aware of the season or the time you're in. Jesus expects us to take responsibility for ourselves. We can't just lay back and, and say, oh, somebody will... Um, bring me or God is just going to whisper in my ear. No, he says, be alert. Uh, watch, you know, stay informed. Make sure that you know what is going on so that you can understand the season that you're in, the time of your life. And, and in so doing, it says that um, you will be able to know what you're up against. You, If you're um, on the alert, if you're watching, if you're pay att paying attention, when the enemy comes, he won't be able to, to break in. He won't be able to deceive you. If you're not staying in the word so that you can understand how God sounds, what God sounds like, meaning that you recognize his patterns, you recognize his character, you recognize his voice. When the enemy comes, you're going to be deceived because he's going to come with whatever you know, half truth, and you'll fall for it because you won't recognize and understand the pattern of God's voice and how God acts. You won't be able to reflect and say, oh, I read a similar thing in the Bible, and this is how it went down. You won't be able to diligently pray before God, and scriptures come to mind because you, you're not paying attention. You're not paying attention to the word, and you're not paying attention to the season and time of your life. But Jesus is saying, look, if the good men of the house had known that this enemy would come, he would have watched and he would his house would not have been broken through. And so Jesus cautions us. He's saying, and this is our Lord saying it. He's saying, be ready and watch. Our Lord is telling us to watch because he's going to come at an hour when we don't think. We don't think he's going to come. We're thinking, oh, he's not going to come. You know, we have time. It's not going to be this year. It'll probably be five, ten years from now. No, we have to be ready every single day, being on the alert and being ready so that when Jesus comes, we don't have to be ashamed. We don't have to be um, uh, servants that fell by the wayside of life and got entangled in all sorts of things. And that our lives are able to be a witness and a testimony for, for God. Um, because we are striving with all of our hearts to follow after him. Now, it doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect. It doesn't mean you won't blow it. You won't make mistakes. You won't stumble. We're all growing. We're all learning. But you pick yourself back up. You repent. You take it to God. If you, if you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, though, something is wrong. And that's why you need to say, wait a minute. I need some help. I need deliverance. I need to really understand what repentance is because repentance means to stop doing something and to change so we should be growing we shouldn't be this 
if you meet someone five years from now, they should say, wow, you've changed so much. <laughs> if, if you meet someone next week, they should say, wow, you're different this week. So keeping the mindset that you're a growing uh, person, you're growing like a, like a plant grows. Starting from a seed, it grows into a little plant, then it grows into a bigger plant, bigger until it becomes a full bone tree and it's able to bear fruit. And the fruit it bears, just as I said in other segments, start small, then they grow and grow and grow. It's the same thing with us in the Lord. We should be growing. And to do that, we've got to follow exactly what Jesus said to do because he gives us the full instruction for how to live.